2006, the best that football had to offer descended on Germany with a common dream of being World Cup champions. From the absolutely incredible goals to Zidane's infamous headbutting in the final game of his career, the 2006 World Cup was a tournament for the ages. In this video, we will break down the 2006 World Cup, looking at every goal, show you how the tournament unfolded, as well as every storyline along the way. Welcome guys, this is Clampack FC, and this is the 2006 World Cup Ultimate Review. We have put a table of contents in the description if you guys want to skip to a specific game. We will be doing these for all the World Cups. This hasn't been done before, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. And now, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, let's get started with Group A. It consisted of Germany, Ecuador, Poland, and Costa Rica. Germany Costa Rica kicked off the tournament and it was a 4-2 thriller. The host came into the World Cup with high hopes and there was excitement from the start when Philipp Lahm opened the scoring in the 6th minute with one of the goals of the tournament. Just look at this incredible goal. To everyone's surprise, Costa Rica responded almost instantly on a fast counter. Closa would go on to score a poacher's goal in the 17th minute and in the second half he would go on to bag another. A cheeky goal by Pablo Wanchope gave Costa Ricans a little bit of hope, which was shortly crushed by yet another incredible goal, this time by a thunderous Torsten Frings hit from 35 out. The other game in match day one was Poland-Ecuador. Both teams went in looking for a crucial win. Ecuador scored a beautifully timed header from Tenorio and then added another through a well-worked team goal, slicing the Polish midfield and defense apart. After a demoralizing defeat, Poland would have to play an informed Germany in a packed Dortmund stadium. There was only one goal in this one as Germany bagged a late one in extra time that secured their spot in the knockout rounds, and Poland was eliminated because at the same time, Ecuador impressed again by beating Costa Rica by three goals. The goals came from Tenorio first, then Delgado, and Cavite sealed it. They were well-worked goals and Ecuador was starting to turn some heads. However, they were torn apart at the hands of the Germans in their last group game, 3-0, courtesy of a close-up brace and a late Podolski sweat to seal it. In the game of already eliminated teams, Poland edged Costa Rica 2-1 with all three goals coming from set pieces. The Costa Rica goal came from Donald Gomez and then two from Pasaki for Poland. This left the final standings of Germany and Ecuador advancing with 9 and 6 points respectively. Group B consisted of England's famous golden generation, Sweden, Paraguay, and Trinidad and Tobago who were making their first and to date only World Cup appearance. England beat Paraguay 1-0 in the opening game of the group. It was a Gamara own goal off of a David Beckham delivery that did it. Trinidad Sweden finished 0-0. When England and Trinidad met, it was 2-0 in favor of England, this time from Peter Crouch for the first and a rocket from Steven Gerrard for the second. While when Paraguay and Sweden met, it took Sweden 89 minutes to break the deadlock, courtesy of a Freddie Jumberg header. The goals picked up in the last group of games of Group B. England took on Sweden in the final match day. The opening goal of the game was one of the goals of the tournament when Joe Cole connected on this bouncing volley. He couldn't have hit it better. Sweden equalized with a great corner goal from Marcus Albeck. It took until the 84th minute for the next goal when Steven Gerrard headed home what he must have thought would be the game winning goal. However, this would not be the case as Hendrik Larsson capitalized in the 90th minute on a bouncing ball in the box which the England defense failed to deal with adequately. At the same time, Paraguay took on Trinidad in their final game of Group B. An own goal from Trinidad's Brent Sancho gave Paraguay a 1-0 lead. Nelson Cuevas would slot home another one and the game finished 2-0. This left the final standings of Group B as shown, with England and Sweden advancing to the round of 16. In Group C, we have Argentina, the Netherlands, Ivory Coast, and Serbia and Montenegro. A very strong group which included the best Ivorian generation ever. Argentina played the Ivory Coast in the first game of Group C. 
Argentina scored two first-half goals from Hernan Crespo and Javier Zaviola through well-worked play. Ivorian legend Didier Drogba added a late goal, but it was too late and Argentina escaped with three points. Holland vs Serbia and Montenegro only had one goal in it, courtesy of a calm, cool finish from Arjen Robin. Then, Argentina took on Serbia and Montenegro in a 6-0 beating. Marcelo Bielsa's side displayed their beautiful possession style, slicing up their opponents for every goal. Maxi Rodriguez scored the first, and the second was one of the best goals in World Cup history, which was led up by 26 passes before Cambiasso buried it in the back of the net. Maxi Rodriguez added another after that, Crespo added the fourth, Tevez had the fifth goal, and a young Lionel Messi scored his first World Cup goal to make it 6-0. Ivory Coast took on the Netherlands needing at least a draw with a win being ideal to have any chance of qualifying for the next round. Unfortunately, the Netherlands scored twice in the span of 5 minutes, first through Robin van Persie, quickly followed by Ruud van Nistelrooy. Bakari Kone cut the deficit in half, but again it was not enough and the best Ivorian generation of all time was eliminated after 2 games. They were unlucky in both games as well as their group they were drawn into, but they still felt like they left the tournament not showing the world their best football. Argentina and the Netherlands met knowing the winner would win the group. It finished with a boring 0-0 scoreline. When the Ivory Coast met Serbia and Montenegro, both teams were already eliminated. However, the Ivorians put on a show coming back to win 3-2 from being down 2-0. The goal scorers were Zigic and Lich for Serbia and Montenegro, while Dindane scored twice and Kalua scored the winner for the African side. The group ended with Argentina and Netherlands advancing. Argentina won their group on goal differential. Moving on to Group D, which consisted of Portugal, Mexico, Angola, and Iran. First, we have Mexico versus Iran, which ended 3-1 in favor of Mexico. Omar Bravo scored the opening goal of the game for Mexico. Goal Muhammadi equalized from a corner. However, Mexico would add two more. Omar Bravo scored Mexico's second, and they added a third from Sinha to put them in good standing to start off group play. Angola took on Portugal in their first game of the group. Pauleta scored in the fourth minute in what would seem to be a blowout. However, Angola defended hard and no more goals were scored. Angola was not going to be the punching bag many expected. They tied their next game against Mexico 0-0, failing to create while defending hard. While Portugal took on Iran, Deco scored an absolute banger early on and Cristiano Ronaldo scored his first World Cup goal to seal the win 2-0. In their final group game, Portugal secured their perfect group record, beating Mexico 2-1. Maniche and Samao scored within 25 minutes for Portugal before Francesca got Mexico on the board. Angola could have advanced with a win in their last game, however, Iran spoiled the party. Flavio scored for Angola and Bakhtirzade scored for Iran as the two teams split the points. Portugal would win Group D comfortably and Mexico advanced as the second place team. Group E consisted of Italy, Ghana, the Czech Republic, and the United States. The first game of the group was the Czech Republic versus the US. There were some great goals in this one. First, a thumping header from Kohler, followed by another great long shot in these group stages, this time from Thomas Rosicki. The Czech star, who just a month earlier made the move to Arsenal, added another one before the game was out. This left Italy to play their first game versus Ghana. It was a 2-0 win for the eventual champions. Andrea Pirlo scored the first banger, a lovely strike from the maestro. La Quinto then slotted home a breakaway in the 83rd minute. Ghana would look to bounce back against the Czech Republic, and they would win with a pair of goals, first a great finish from Asamoah Gyan, and then a rip from Sonny Muntari after the Czechs were reduced to 10 men. Italy took on the US in their second game. A physical game with a goal from Gilardino followed within six minutes of each other as well of a pair of red cards split the contest. 
All teams were still alive going into the last round of games. Ghana would beat the U.S. 2-1 in their game. Dramon scored the opening goal and then Clint Dempsey equalized only for Apia to bury a spot kick three minutes later and secure Ghana's spot in the round of 16. Italy also won their game with goals from Matarazzi and Inzaghi in a comfortable win. Italy topped the group and Ghana finished second. Group F was made up of Brazil, the favorites going into the tournament, Australia, Japan, and Croatia. Australia could not have started the tournament off any better in their opening game against Japan. Japan scored first and it looked like the game was theirs. However, Tim Cahill scored in the 84th minute before scoring again in the 89th. They would add another in stoppage time through John Olosi. The reigning champions Brazil brought a great side to Germany in 2006. They opened the tournament against Croatia. One absolute wonder strike of a goal from Kaká in the 44th was all she wrote. Japan and Croatia drew 0-0 in their second game, as Brazil recorded another win, this time against Australia. Adriano had the first before Fred, who played for Brazil at the 2006 and 2014 World Cups, but barely in between, added a tap-in late. More goals were on offer in Brazil's final game. However, it would be Brazil who conceded first, from a Teji Tamada banger for Japan. Ronaldo would add one before half. Then, at the start of the second half, Juninho scored what would be another amazing long shot goal in this World Cup. A great ball from Ronaldinho set up Gilberto for Brazil's third, and Ronaldo, as Ronaldo does, finished them off. At the same time, Croatia and Australia met. Croatia needing a win to advance, and Australia only needing a draw. The first goal was yet another world-class strike, as Dario Serna buried a free kick. The Aussies would tie it back up after receiving a pen. They would go down again as future Croatian Bayern Munich manager Niko Kovac took a strike which the goalie made a mess of. However, Liverpool player Harry Kewell would plunge Croatian hearts and send Australia into rejoice. Brazil won the group and Australia advanced as runners up. Group G consisted of Switzerland, France, South Korea and Togo. Park Ji Sung and South Korea took on Emmanuel Adebayor's Togo in the first game of the group. Mohamed Kader gave Togo the lead on a nice finish. This was cancelled out in the second half on a well struck free kick from Lee Chun Su. Another great goal from outside the box gave Korea a late lead, this time from An Jung Hwan. The game ended 2 1 in favor of the Koreans. Though France and Switzerland was the marquee game of the group, it ended 0-0. And now we move on to France and South Korea. Thierry Henry bounced on a deflected shot to give France an early lead in the ninth minute. However, France could not get another, and in the 81st minute, Park Ji Sung turned in a scrappy goal. The game ended 1-1. Switzerland and Togo went at it in Dortmund. Alexander Fry turned in a tap-in in the ninth minute, then Tranquilo Barnetta lasered one home in the second half to seal the win and three points for Switzerland. Going into the final game of the group, France needed a win against Togo, and they would get it. The first French goal was coolly finished by Patrick Vieira, and then Henri would show his class again with a great touch and finish. The game would end 2-0. Finally, it was Switzerland and South Korea in the other game. A towering header from Felipe Senderos gave Switzerland the lead, and Alexander Fry finished the game off. Switzerland would win the group, and France finished runners-up. The last group was Group H, and it consisted of Spain, Ukraine, Tunisia, and Saudi Arabia. The first game was a young but very promising Spanish generation against the Ukraine side led by Andrei Shevchenko. It would only be Spain in this one. Xabi Alonso scored Spain's first off of a corner. A David Villa free kick took a deflection on the way in for Spain's second. David Villa converted from the spot for Spain's third. And Fernando Torres finished the game off as he powered one home for the fourth. Tunisia and Saudi Arabia met in Munich. Zaid Jaziri opened the scoring for Tunisia. Yasser Al-Khatani tied it back up in the second half. Sami 
Al-Jabbar gave Saudi Arabia the lead in the 84th. However, it would not be the winner as Roddy Jotty tied it back up for Tunisia in the 92nd. They split the points. When Ukraine and Saudi Arabia met, it was all Ukraine this time. Andre Rosu scored the first off of a corner. An absolutely brilliant strike from Sergei Rebrov left the Saudi goalie powerless to make it 2-0. Andre Shevchenko headed home Ukraine's third, and then Maxim Kalyanchenko slotted away the fourth to end the night. Spain then took on Tunisia, and it was actually Tunisia who would break the deadlock in the eighth minute. It would take until the 71st for Raul to pull Spain back. Spain did not back off, and Fernando Torres found himself through and put it past the keeper. Spain would get a pen in stoppage time, and Torres would convert for his second of the game. Spain's final game of the group came against Saudi Arabia. Only one goal in this one, when Juanito flew in and headed home a good set piece goal. There was only one goal when Ukraine and Tunisia met as well. An Andrei Shevchenko penalty in the 70th minute decided the game. Spain and Ukraine would advance from Group H. Finally, the group stage is over. Let's move on to the fun stuff, the round of 16. We're going to go through all of the matchups, starting with Germany meeting Sweden in front of 66,000 in Munich. This game was decided in the early stretches as Lukas Podolski got onto a rebound in the fourth minute. Then, 10 minutes later, he slotted home another after a nice dish from Miroslav Klose. Germany would win the game 2-0. The next match was a thriller with Argentina taking on Mexico in Leipzig. Mexico earned a free kick and Rafa Marquez got on the end of it to give the Mexicans the lead after just 6 minutes. Then, Argentina scored what was an absolutely magnificent corner goal from Hernan Crespo just 3 minutes later. Look at the way he manages to get a foot on this one and what a finish. The game would go into extra time where Maxi would score one of the best goals of this World Cup with this insane volley. It would prove decisive and Argentina would advance. Next up, taking on England was Ecuador, the surprise team of the tournament. A David Beckham free kick from 30 yards out was the decisive goal England needed to book their spot in the quarters. In the next fixture, Portugal took on the Netherlands in Nuremberg. Another close game, this one was decided by a well-worked Portuguese goal finished off by Maniche. Now we move to Italy versus Australia where we have another one goal scoreline. A Marco Materazzi red card in the 50th minute saw Italy go down a man. This one was a stalemate which lasted until the 95th minute when Fabio Grosso drew a penalty and Francesco Totti converted from the spot to send the Italians through. Up next was Switzerland versus Ukraine. No goals from this one after 120 minutes and we have our first shootout of the tournament. Shevchenko took the first pen for Ukraine and missed. Streller would then miss for Switzerland. Malevsky converted his spot kick for the Ukrainians, but Switzerland missed again when Barnetta could not convert. Rebrov then scored for the Ukraine, and Cabanas couldn't convert yet again for the Swiss. Finally, Husseyev stepped up and converted to send Ukraine to the last eight. Next, we have Brazil taking on Ghana. Ronaldo found space in behind, took it past the keeper, and rolled it in for Brazil's first. Then, Adriano tapped in a second on the cusp of halftime. The Brazilians would find one more through Zé Roberto to assure them safe passage to the quarterfinals. In the last game of the round of 16, we had Spain taking on France. Spain got an early penalty and David Convia converted coolly from the spot. Then, Vieira found a brilliant ball to release Ribéry and he took it around the keeper and put it in the back of the net. Patrick Vieira would then get his goal when he got his head on the end of a cross to give the French the lead. France would get the insurance goal through Zinedine Zidane as he ran past Puyol and finished with confidence. And now we move on to the last eight. Still a lot of heavy hitters left in this one. Brazil, the bookies favorites were still in it, so too were Germany, England, and France. It was anyone's cup though and no one could really predict how it would turn. 
host Germany took on Argentina in their first quarterfinal match. Argentina opened the scoring early in the second half as Raquel May delivered a corner and Ayala headed it home. Late drama followed as in the 80th minute, Schweinsteiger flicked on a ballot cross right into the path of Closa, who buried it home. The game would need penalties to decide a winner. Neville scored first for Germany. Cruz then scored for Argentina. Balak then scored for Germany. Ayala then missed his pen for Argentina. Podolski then scored for Germany. Maxi Rodriguez converted his pen. Borowski then scored for Germany. And Cambiasso then missed for Argentina to send Germany through. The next match was Italy taking on Ukraine. A great run and strike from Zambrata gave Italy the early lead in the sixth minute. They would make it two when an unmarked Luca Toni found space in the box on an Italian cross. A tap-in, again from Toni, gave Italy their third and a ticket to the semifinals. The next game we had was England versus Portugal. Scoreless through normal and extra time, a silly Wayne Rooney red left England fighting to stay in the game which they previously were on the front foot of. The game went on to penalties, and the pressure would be too much for the best crop of English players in many decades. Samao scored first for Portugal. Ricardo then saved Lampard's penalty. Viana would then miss for Portugal. Owen Hargreaves put England level with their second. Petit then missed for Portugal. However, Steven Gerrard would miss and keep things level. Helder Postiga then buried it for Portugal. Carragher would go on to miss another for England after having to retake his penalty because he did not wait for the whistle. It all came down to 21-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo. Looking back, no way he could have missed as he confidently sent the ball into the back of the net and Portugal into the last four of the World Cup. The last quarterfinal game was Brazil taking on France. Only one goal in this one and it would be scored in the 57th minute off of a French free kick which eventually found an unmarked Thierry Henry running onto the back post. The game would end 1-0. Now we move on to the final four. The semi-finals consisted of Italy taking on host Germany while Portugal and France met in the other game. Both of these ties were riddled with footballing legends and it was an absolute pleasure to watch these superstars go at it. Jurgen Klinsmann opted for this lineup, having Klosa and Podolski to lead the line while leaving Bastian Schweinsteiger on the bench. Tati, Pirlo, and Cannavaro created a great spine for the Italians. No goals came in normal time, and this led to extra time. It looked like the game was destined for penalties, but in the 119th minute, Fabio Grosso, the left back of all people, found himself with the ball at his feet and curled the ball perfectly into the back of the net to stun the 65,000 in attendance in Dortmund. As Germany pushed for the equalizer, Italy scored again a minute later on a counter from Del Piero to seal the tie and send them to the World Cup final. France took on Portugal in the other semi. France's strength was its midfield, with Mucchielli and Vieira playing behind Zidane. What a midfield that is. They also had Thierry Henry up top. Portugal's front line was its strength, led by Figo, Paleta, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Only one goal in this match after Henri was taken down in the box. Zidane put in the penalty as they dreamt of a second World Cup in only eight years. From hundreds of countries that took part in qualifying to the 32 that were chosen to compete at the 2006 FIFA World Cup, it would come down to France and Italy to decide who would be crowned champion of the world and take home the most prized trophy in the world of sports. Let's run through the lineups and see the men entrusted with this honor. Starting with Italy, Buffon was in between the sticks as always. Zambrata, Carnavaro, Materazzi, and Grosso made up the back line. The four in midfield consisted of Camerionisi, Gattuso, Pirlo, and Perota. Luca Toni and Francesco Tati led the line up top. France played a 4-2-3-1. Bartes was in goal. Sanyo, Turam, Galas, and Abidal made up the back line. Vieira, 
and Makaleli played in holding midfield, allowing Zidane free roam in front of him. Maluda and Ribéry took up posts on the wing, and Henri was up top. France got a soft PK called in their favor as Materazzi barely touched Maluda, who went down in the box. More on Materazzi in a sec. Zidane stepped in and almost fluffed it as he tried a Panenka, which would bounce off the crossbar and across the line. It would take Italy only 12 minutes to pull the game back as Marco Materazzi rose higher than everyone to head home Pirlo's corner. The game would be taken to extra time where the unimaginable would happen. The moment that would shape this game, this World Cup, and the legacy of one of the greatest players to ever kick a ball. In the 110th minute, Zidane would send his now infamous headbutt right through the chest of Marco Materazzi with full force. It would be spotted by the assistant referee and Zidane would receive a stray red. Though we don't know exactly what was said, Materazzi in 2016 said, I talked about his sister, adding, what I said was stupid, but it did not deserve the reaction. You would hear much stronger words on the streets of Naples or Milan or Paris. Nevertheless, it was a sad sight as Zidane walked past the World Cup and into the locker room in what would be his last game ever. No one would score in the last 10 minutes, so the World Cup final would be decided by penalties. Both teams had great goalkeepers, anyone could have won it. First up was Pirlo for Italy, who buried it down the middle. Sylvia and Wiltard then scored for France. Materazzi stepped up next and finished. Then came David Trezeguet for France, who missed his pen after he hit the crossbar and bounced on the line and bounced out. Daniele De Rossi then stepped up and buried his. Abidal stepped up next for France and converted. Italy's next taker was Del Piero. He converted his pen. Shooting fourth for France was Willy Sagnol, who converted from the spot. So up walked Fabio Grosso, knowing a conversion would win Italy the World Cup. No hesitation as he buried it and the Italian celebrations began. Though not favorites to win the World Cup, it was a brilliant Italian team who stepped up when they needed to. Carnivaro would have the honor of lifting the World Cup as confetti poured down on many legends of the Italian game. A great sight as many legends including Buffon, Pirlo, Gattuso, Zambrata, and Totti got to hold this magnificent prize. Alright, there it is, the 2006 FIFA World Cup. I hope you guys enjoyed, we put a lot of effort into this one. This World Cup was pretty special for me personally as it was my first World Cup memory and it fueled my love for the game. Thanks again to everyone for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And until next time, see ya!